Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. Panasonic has just launched their brand new firmware for the S5 Mark II and X that features loads of new features and upgrades that many of us have been waiting for. The current firmware is version 3.0 for the S5 Mark II and version 2.0 for the S5 Mark II X. So what's been upgraded? First up, we get updates to the Phase Hybrid Autofocus, putting it in line with the autofocus options found on the Lumix G9 Mark II giving us more tracking options than we previously had and better overall performance. While the S5 Mark II and X already had human eye, face and body tracking, the algorithm's now been tweaked so the performance is even better. A good example of this is looking at the old firmware. As you can see, the camera will switch focus as soon as I start to cover my face as low as my chin. The new firmware makes the autofocus way more sticky on my eye than ever before, and I have to cover up more of my face before it shifts focus. The biggest difference between the autofocus performance on the Panasonic bodies and something like my Sony FX3 is that the S5 Mark II and X will stay on the object easier once it pulls focus. On the Sony, if it spots an eye at all, it will then just snap back straight away. This feels intuitive and I have to stress less about covering up my eyes. The basic animal tracking of the old firmware has now been upgraded to animal eye and body tracking. Like all of the tracking modes, you'll see a yellow box come up and it will either select the body at a distance or the eye if they're up close. Furthermore, there's also car and motorcycle tracking now, and it's very responsive when it sees a vehicle in the frame. Much like the G9 Mark II, the new firmware does a great job at tracking vehicles. Let's take a look at how the car tracking mode works here in the studio. It'll detect a car and stick on it without any problems. If a new car enters the frame, you'll see a white box come up. You can then either tap on the white box to switch focus to the new car, or use the joystick to do exactly the same thing if you plugged into HDMI. These same object selection options are found in the human, animal, and motorcycle tracking, and it's very sticky. So the white box is other objects that it's not tracking. The yellow box is what it's currently tracking. To check out the new autofocus modes, on the back of the camera, hit the autofocus button, and then hit display, and it'll bring up all the modes that are now available on the camera. This new autofocus menu is great. Whether you're shooting photos or video, you now have better options at your disposal. For those wondering, unfortunately 1080p at 50 and 60 frames per second still doesn't support phase detection autofocus. I was hoping we'd see that introduced on this firmware update, but knowing Panasonic, if they can do it in the future, they hopefully will. Now while those autofocus features are awesome and they definitely improve the performance of the camera, it's this next one I'm most excited about. We get major upgrades to the active IS or in-body image stabilization system. So if you saw my G9 Mark II review, you will no doubt remember there were a few new e-stabilization modes that really helped with the corner wobble, especially when using wide angle lenses. So if you do any run and gun work, we now have the same great features found in the G9 Mark II and the S5 Mark II and X. Now, e-stabilization was something I always avoided on prior cameras, but the G9 Mark II took this to almost GoPro levels. The S5 Mark II and X both now have three modes, off, which is the standard active IS, standard, which gives you a small crop, and high, which crops in more, but gives you crazy straight out of camera image stabilization. If you're in a really bumpy situation, vlogging, walking fast, or even running, high mode is a really great choice. This update's huge, and I'll be using these stabilization features a whole lot more moving forward. Let's take a quick look at the stabilization on the original firmware before the upgrade using the standard Active IS. It looks pretty great. Panasonic stabilization is pretty cool. Now we're over to the new firmware in Active IS mode, so the same mode without any of the E stabilization modes, and it looks pretty much the same as before, which is fine. Now we switch on E stabilization to standard. The improvement is quite obvious, even though it looked great before. Lastly, this is high mode. You can see how much it crops in, but this is all straight out of the camera, and there's no need to run it through any type of post-production software afterwards. This is right up there as the best in-camera stabilization I've ever seen, along with the G9 Mark II. It's crazy. Now, if you plan on using the e-stabilization a lot like I will anytime I'm shooting handheld, you can quick map this to any of the custom function buttons just by holding it down for a few seconds and navigating the menu system. These new updates in no way impact the IS boost mode, which was previously in the camera. So that's a separate mode, and that's best for tripod looking shots when shooting handheld. So if you're just standing there, IS boost mode is still the way to go. The next major upgrade is video proxy recordings. This works in the MOV record quality options for both cameras, or if you're shooting in ProRes on the Panasonic S5 Mark II X, you can select between high, medium, and low data rates for all 
frame rates including 24, 25, 30, 50 and 60 frames per second. You can shoot with this feature in the standard picture profiles or when shooting with the real time LUT feature. While I haven't had a good chance to test out this feature yet, it's a really handy feature, especially if your computer struggles to edit full res 422 10-bit. This next upgrade is for photographers, so if you've been waiting for a pre-burst mode, we now finally have it on both cameras. This can shoot at 30 frames per second, and it also allows you to capture the action 1.5 seconds before releasing the shutter button. If you're a photographer doing sports or action, this can be a huge advantage. Lastly, we get frame IO support built directly into the camera. So if you're on Wi-Fi at all, you can then sync your cameras directly to the cloud. Now, I don't have an Adobe IO account or any Adobe software anymore because I don't like subscription services. But if you're in a situation where you wanna do remote checking or editing with a production team, this should hopefully be beneficial to you. Again, it's not something I've tested, unfortunately, but it's there if you need it. At the end of the day, as a video shooter predominantly and content creator, I'm a big fan of these upgrades. The active IS and improved autofocus is awesome. So if you're tracking animals or whether you want to shoot cars or motorcycles, you now have that ability. I think this is really cool. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Also let me know if you shoot with an S5 Mark II or X down there as well. If it's helpful, leave a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more of my videos, check out this one on screen. Catch you soon. See ya.